7.02 and I am reconvening to open session and calling to order the regular Board of Education meeting for Indian Prairie School District 204 on Monday, February 5th, 2024. Michelle, will you please call the roll? Ms. Donahue? Here. Ms. Deming? Present. Mr. Rising? Here. Ms. Jane? Here. Mr. Karubas? Here. Ms. Gintz? Here. And Ms. Fosdick? Here. We have a quorum. Ms. Gintz, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have four board salutes tonight. Let's start with uh, Ms. Vazdek. Career and Technical Education Instructor of the Year. The board salutes Neuqua Valley High School business education teacher, Jennifer Yavorsky for being awarded the Career and Technical Education Instructor of the Year. Jennifer was selected by District 204 in partnership with the DuPage Area Occupational Education System and the College of DuPage in recognition of her innovation, passion, and advocacy. Congrats to Jennifer on receiving this award. Ms. Jane. Indian Prairie School District Spelling Bee winners. The board salutes Jay Vishwanathan, eighth grader from Hill Middle School, who captured the first place title at the 2024 Indian Prairie School District Spelling Bee on Tuesday, January 30th. Michelle Batumer, eighth grader from Gregory Middle School, took second place, and Janani Narayan, eighth grader from Crone Middle School, won third place. 21 students from all seven middle schools in the district participated in the event. The top three judges, the top three students from District 204 will now compete in the Scripps DuPage County Spelling Bee final on Wednesday, February 21st in Wheaton. Congratulations, Jay, Michelle, and Janani. Mr. Rising. No. Oh, Ms. Gens, okay. <laughs> District 204 students excel in the high school robotics tournament. The board salutes District 204 high school students and staff who participated in the robotics tournament at Crone Middle School on Friday, January 26th, as well as Director of Innovation and Instructional Leadership, Brian Giovannini for serving as tournament organizer. Congratulations to Wabanzi 8780A, which captured the Tournament Champion Award, Matia 8995B, and Niqua 2360N were awarded tournament finalists. The skills champion went to Matia 8995B, and the skills runner-up was granted to Wabanzi 8780A. Congratulations to all the robotics teams, and thank you to the Indian Prairie Educational Foundation for supporting this robotics tournament experience. So I have the last board salute. If I could have Mrs. Rodriguez come up with her family to the podium. <laughs> Uh, Indian Principal Association DuPage Regional Elementary School Principal of the Year. The board salutes young elementary school principal Aaron Rodriguez, who was named the Elementary School Principal of the Year from the DuPage region of the Illinois Principals Association. The award recognizes elementary school principals who have demonstrated a positive impact on their students and their learning community. We wish to thank you, Mrs. Rodriguez, for everything you do. So I just, hey, can maybe hold you for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
multitasking is my life. Um, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, school board members, um, as well as Dr. Talley. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, it goes without saying that I'm so appreciative of this award, and I'm beyond honored. Um, and although I stand here in front of you today, and I mean this full heartedly, I could not be here without my amazing, amazing team behind me. Um, this is a small, small amount of individuals. We have over 100 educators that show up every single day at Nancy Young to support all of our families and all of our students. And without them, I could not do my job. Uh, building relationships is the foundation at Nancy Young Elementary School, and I cannot wait to see where all of our relationships take us. <laughs> so thank you for this award, and I really would you, appreciate it. Would you also it. like to uh, uh, introduce your family? Because I think they're important oh. to what you do every day, too. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Uh, this is Giovanni John. He is my oldest. You're how old? Ten. Ten years old. Um, Sophia Christine, how old? Eight years. She just got five medals in Tennessee as a gymnast. Giovanni just got higher up in jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Cecilia Jane. Also a retired 204 teacher as well. Yes. She is the reason I am here today. Um, and my husband is the reason I am a principal. He supports me day in and day out, and I could not do this without his support. So thank you. Go Dolphins. Okay, next is our student representative report by Anna Buckenauer from Wabonzi Valley High School. All right, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here again. My name is Anna Buckenauer and I'm here today to represent Wabonzi Valley High School. As a warrior, I am proud to report that our Obanzi community continues to thrive and provide many outstanding experiences to our students. First, some recent successes in the world of clubs and activities. 64% of our students are involved in some type of club or activity. At Wabansi, we have over 60 clubs that range in interests. Students can be a part of aspiring medical professionals or the chess team. It's quite a spectrum of opportunities. Chess comp completed their season with a second place finish to IMSA at sectionals. They compete at state this weekend and we're anticipating a top 15 finish. Last year they finished seventh. Scholastic Bowl finished as DVC conference championships and hosts regionals at the green and gold tonight. The speech team is the strongest in Wabanzi history and is looking to, at taking 12 students to state in three weeks. Show choir began their competition season this past Saturday at Crate Monet. As always, we look forward to shining a, a shining season from Soundcheck. In terms of athletics, the Wabanzi Valley winter athletic season is slowly coming to an end, and what a winter season it has been. The boys' basketball program started off this season winning 23 games in a row and are ranked highly in the state. Unfortunately, last Saturday, the Warriors suffered their first loss of the season to another highly ranked team. They did, however, secure a DVC conference championship last Friday with a win over DeKalb. The girls' basketball program is currently 26-2 and, and are in the midst of a seven-game winning streak heading into the final week of their regular season. So far this season, the varsity girls' basketball program are York Thanksgiving champions, Falcon Classic champions, and most recently, DuPage Valley Conference champions. The girls secured a number two seed in the IHSA sectional and are looking to 3P as regional champions. 
the girls bowling program completed a very successful winter season by winning the DuPage Valley Conference Championship. Seniors Maya Zatlukel and Laura Bornhoff competed in the IHSA Regional Tournament and qualified for sectionals as individuals. The boys swim and dive team competed in the DVC meet over the weekend and finished second after completing an undefeated season in DVC duels. The boys are excited for IHSA sectionals and the state meets and are hoping to bring home some hardware at the state meet. The Warrior Dance Team finishes the season strong by finishing third at IHSA sectional and advancing to the IHSA state competition. The winter season has been great to us so far. We look forward to what the IHSA postseasons bring our way. Moving on to academics, on February 21st, we will host our Indian Prairie Scholar event where we will recognize 257 of our seniors who earned a 3.6 or greater cumulative GPA. We will also induct two alumni into the distinguished alumni. We are quite proud to announce that Wabonzi has more presidential scholar candidates than any other Illinois high school. This year, we recognize eight students as candidates for the US Presidential Scholar. Sean Ball, Parnitha Bandala, Smitha Jayakrishnan, Neha Naguara, Peter Nitchi, Sai Pidanti, Maya Sani, and Sriman Tiprani. We recognize four students as candidates for the US Presidential Scholars in CTE. Declan Bowman, myself, Anna Bucknauer, Kayla Newberg, and Samita Subramanian. That's all for the Wabansi Valley Board Report. Thank you, and as always, go Warriors. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Okay, it is now time for public comment and 60 minutes is allowed. Each person is limited to three minutes. When addressing the board, we ask that you respect the confidentiality and safety of our students and school district personnel. We also ask that those addressing the board be cognizant that this is an open meeting and is available to all age groups and as such, ask that you consider who the audience members are this evening and keep comments age appropriate. Public comment represents the voice and opinion of the speaker. There will be no feedback from the board members during the meeting, but follow-up will be provided by an administrator as appropriate. Although this is not required, it is helpful for the board to know whether the comments and concerns we hear are being raised by residents, so we ask that you state if you live in the district and if you currently have children in our schools. We have two speakers tonight. The first is Alicia Smith. I gotta love students. Um, I, my name is Alicia Smith. I attended Gregory Middle School and Wabonzi Valley High School. Um, I taught at third grade at Kendall Elementary, second grade at Georgetown. I currently live in the Gombert attendance area where my niece and nephews attend school. Indian Prairie School District 204 states that you are committed to equity. Indian Prairie School District 204 does not have equity in busing boundaries or success for its Title I schools and families. 204 does not have equity in busing. The district's policy is that students who live less than 1.5 miles from their school are not eligible for busing transportation. In practice, this is not occurring. The district picks and chooses who they grant busing to. There are neighborhoods that are less than 1.5 miles that the district chooses to bus and other neighborhoods whom they deny busing. Georgetown and McCarty neighborhoods walk alongside Ogden and or Eola on their route to Wabanzi. The Georgetown neighborhood has to cross the busiest Walker intersection in the district. Yet neither Georgetown's or McCarty's route has been reviewed for safety since they started walking to Avanzi over 30 years ago. Meanwhile, other high schoolers which, with a much safer walk are being bussed. 204 does not have equity and boundaries. You stated when you created boundaries that you are not going to break up neighborhoods. So then why did, did you take a neighborhood attending Georgetown and split the neighborhood? one side of the street staying at Georgetown and the other side going to Gombert. When 204 did the boundaries, you also changed Fisher's feeder schools so that now three out of its four feeder schools are Title I or lower income schools, Georgetown, McCarty, and Gombert. This creates more obstacles for the Fisher staff and their students to overcome in order to be successful. 204 does not have equity in academic success. Four 204 schools do not meet the state average for reading and math. Georgetown, Longwood, McCarty, and Fisher. Georgetown and Longwood have more than three times the district average of low-income students. Neighborville 203 does not cram that many low-income students into its schools. 
all of Naperville 203 schools are above the state average in both reading and math. 204 needs to show that you are actually committed to equity for all, including your low-income families and schools. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Bryce Jordan. Hello, Dr. Talley, President Donahue, and other esteemed school board members. My name is Bryce Jordan, and I'm a senior at Matia Valley and a recent Eagle Scout of Troop 508. On November 6, 2023, you may remember that I was recognized uh, during the, uh, this school board meeting's board salute alongside fellow uh, Troop 508 member and Wabonzi Valley student um, as recent Eagle Scouts within the district. His tragic passing is the reason I'm here today. When, this, um, when our fellow troop member was tragically killed in a cycle, cyclist accident, it tore a hole in the hearts of everyone in the troop and impacted many within our school district. I frantically searched for why or how this could have happened, and I wondered aloud, could our school district be doing more to teach bicycle safety? I remember in elementary school attending a bike safety assembly. I have the helmet at home to prove it, uh, which is a great start to spread public awareness for bicycle safety, but I don't think it's enough. When kids are younger, they're more impressionable and will normally listen to and believe what adults tell them. But as soon as kids hit preteen and teenage years, they focus more on what peers think of them and might disregard safety to fit in. I believe that bicycling on busy roads is just as dangerous as driving. The dangers while driving are so heavily focused on in all driver's ed classes, so it only makes sense to try reinstilling cyclist safety tips at the middle school and high schools. Incorporating a more peer-focused approach may yield more retention of the principles for these age groups. How do the middle and high schools determine what safety principles students must learn? Is it a part of the formation of the health curriculum? How could bicycle safety be implemented into such a curriculum? Also, is it possible to have more bicycle safety assemblies, especially at the higher grade levels? Perhaps uh, partnerships with the Aurora and Naperville Police Departments to carry out or present these assemblies would be possible. May is already the National Bicycle Safety Month, so would this be the time frame for these assemblies? Are assemblies coordinated at the school level or does the district have any input to their scheduling or like, are they mandated? If this assembly were to happen, could a member of Troop 508 be in attendance to speak about the incident or importance of following safety precautions while biking? Maybe a sound bite or an interview to be shown? This type of personal anecdote might make this topic more real to students in our district. Thank you for your input, guidance, and considering my questions and proposals. I would love to spearhead uh, this if this were to move forward. Uh, reach out to me uh, with the email I have listed on uh, my sheet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bryce. Thank you. We now move to our consent agenda and superintendent report. We will start with the superintendent report, Dr. Talley. Thank you, Ms. Donahue, members of the Board of Education, Indian Prairie Community. February is African American History Month. During this month, we celebrate the contributions that African Americans have made on our country and the world. Schools have already started their activities to celebrate this month with resources that have been shared with all of our schools. I'm happy to announce that Indian Prairie School District is the recipient of the Hill Hilling, Illinois grant in the amount of $35,000. The funds from this grant will support the district's mental health symposium, as well as community parent engagement in the district's restorative practices and culturally responsive work. Our second annual mental health symposium will take place on Saturday, March 9th at Matia High School. There will be a breakout sessions for parents and for students. More information will come out soon after, uh, about the symposium. Um, IPEF, the uh, Indian Prairie Education Foundation, will have its third annual Inspire event on March 8th. This event allows IPEF to 
both celebrate our community and also raise the funds to, to run fine arts festival, robotics, and other programs that benefit our students and staff. Students will perform at the event and there will be a silent option that will include student artwork. I'm very pleased to say that in my office, I have an art piece created by a fourth grade student that was part of the silent auction from two years ago. Please consider attending the event in support of IPEF. March 19th is an election primary day. Because of the number of schools that are used for polling places, we will have an e-learning day on that particular day. The day will be synchronous in nature and will have a different setup than the e-learning days that we have used already this year. More information will be going home to families about the schedule for that day. Each year, our schools are required by the state to uh, have asked parents, staff, and students to complete the five essential survey. The surveys are happening now. I ask parents to please complete the surveys. Survey results are used by the schools as a data piece that is, a, that is reviewed for the creation of the school improvement plan. The current response rate for parents is 3%, with schools looking for at least 20% in order to receive a report from the University of Chicago. I will say this right now, the one school that is almost halfway there, almost halfway there, is Young Elementary School. <laughs> Finally, I want to congratulate Ms. Elizabeth Lowry, Student Services Coordinator at Brooks, on her National Board recertification. National Board certification is a rigorous process and it demonstrates a teacher's personal and professional commitment to teaching. Ms. Uh, Lowry's recent, recently earned her recertification and should be congratulated on going the extra mile. Ms. Donahue, I'll turn it back to you. All right. I now need a motion and a second for the consent agenda items D through J. Make a motion that the Board of Education approve consent agenda items D through J as presented. A second. Any, any discussion? Michelle, will you please call the roll? Mr. Rising? Yes. Ms. Gintz? Yes. Mr. Karubas? Yes. Ms. Deming? Aye. Ms. Donahue? Yes. Ms. Jane? Yes. And Ms. Fosdick? Yes. The motion passes. Next, we move to our action items. We have approval of gifts and donations report from the first semester of the 23-24 school year. I need a motion and a second. I move that the Board of Education approve the gifts and donations report 2023-24 for first semester as presented. I second. Is there any discussion? I think it's always appropriate to really um, point out how generous our community is and our staff and all the people that provide donations to our school. It's really remarkable when you look at the amount of uh, gifts that are, are presented to our, our district to help support our students in a variety of different ways. So I, we are greatly appreciative of all of the um, financial support that we get through those donations so thank you very much Michelle will you call the roll Miss Fosdick yes Miss Jane yes Miss Gintz yes Mr. Rising yes Miss Deming aye Mr. Karubas yes and Miss Donahue yes motion passes okay next up is the approval of the elementary English language arts uh, resource recommendation I need a motion and a second. I, I move. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I move that the Board of Education approve the Elementary English Language Arts Resource for Use beginning in the 2024-2025 school year as presented. I second. Any discussion? Okay. Michelle, will you please call the roll? Ms. Gintz? Yes. Ms. Jane? Yes. Mr. Karubas? Yes. Ms. Fosdick? Yes. Ms. Deming? Aye. Mr. Rising? Yes. And Ms. Donahue? Yes. The motion passes. All right, next up is approval for the Board of Education League of Innovative Schools 2024 travel expenses pre-approval. I make a, mo a motion that the Board of Education approve the Board of Education League of Innovative Schools 2024 convening travel expenses pre-approval as presented. Second. 
Any discussion? I think it was yeah. I, um, so at the annual Illinois School Board Conference, we had the opportunity to present our work with um, um, mental health in our in our schools, in our partnership with the community. And um, that presentation was received so positively that we had um, requested Dr. Talley to look into other opportunities to present this work in hopes that it would inspire other districts to look into ways to uh, provide such mental health support to their students. And um, Dr. Talley could speak more to this particular conference, but uh, we were pleased that we uh, were accepted at another conference that would give us more of a national platform to share the work that we're doing and the services that we're providing to our students. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this and hopefully learn from other school boards around, around the country, but also I'm eager to share the work that we're doing. Thank you, Ms. Jane. Um, Indian Prairie has been a member of the League of Innovative Schools even before I came here. Um, in fact, when I came as superintendent, we had to reapply. So whenever there's a new superintendent, a district has to reapply to be a member. The League is made up of school districts across the United States, covering uh, more than 38 states and over 100 school districts. They have two convenings a year, and this year they will be uh, having their meeting in New York. We'll visit a school district that's in New York that is part of the um, league, and then we'll be able to share what we've been doing with regards to mental health. And so I'm, I'm very pleased that we're able to take this to a national audience. Uh, hopefully other school districts will see what we've been able to do and try to um, make it happen in their district. It's so important. Okay, Michelle, will you please call the roll? Mr. Rising? Yes. Ms. Fosdick? Yes. Ms. Jane? Yes. Mr. Karubas? Yes. Ms. Gintz? Yes. Ms. Donahue? Yes. And Ms. Deming? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, now we will have a presentation from Laura Nealon, Elizabeth Kalata. Latia Johnson, D. Bachelor, Bachelor, and Graham Barfus about K-5 STEM programming. Um, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Good evening, Dr. Talley, board members. Um, it is with great pleasure that we're here tonight um, amongst these amazing people that um, are going to share what we are doing in the buildings for K-5 STEM. Um, before we get started, I do want to introduce them, but I do also want to point out that we are going to be um, really stating um, and bringing out priority one and two of the strategic plan. You will see um, explicitly, hopefully, um, how we really do focus on student development with our K-5 STEM program, as well as investing in staff. Um, and you will see uh, members of our staff here tonight, and they will explain um, how integral they are in the process of what we are doing in our buildings. So with that, um, first and foremost, I have Graham Barfus with us tonight. He is a grade four student at Steck Elementary. Uh, Mrs. Batchelder is a third grade teacher at Steck Elementary. Latia, or, sorry, Liz Coletta uh, is our member of our STEM integration specialist team here at the CEC. She came to us uh, when the STEM school closed. Prior to that, she taught at Scullin Middle School and Granger and lots of other places. Um, and Latia Johnson joined our team this year as a STEM integration specialist as well. And she last year was teaching at Fry and before that taught at early childhood. So tonight we really have three purposes that we'd like to go through with you. Um, and mostly I'm gonna do not the, mostly the talking. Uh, this is 
who you want to hear from, I know. Um, but I do want to state that we're going to be exploring um, the transformative impact um, of integrating SAM Labs um, STEM resource into our K-5 classrooms. Um, we're going to examine how SAM Labs accelerates authentic, inclusive, and empowering learning experiences for all of our students. Um, and then we're going to demonstrate the profound positive effect of STEM integration on student engagement, collaboration, and skill development. When um, I came to you um, a few years ago, it seems like it was longer than that, only just a <laughs> couple years ago, um, when the STEM school was closing, we had um, some decisions to make at a district level. Um, and after lots of conversations with cabinet, Dr. Talley, um, our approach was really to take STEM in a systemic way um, at the kindergarten through fifth grade level. Um, we really wanted to, we knew a lot of good work was already being done in classrooms across the district, um, particularly in STEM, but we really wanted to push in and provide experiences that were K-5 in every classroom. Um, we first, at that point, um, the strategic plan had not been done yet, so we really looked at t two key components, which was the SEL, Castle Framework and our Portrait of a Graduate. So that really helped frame our work from the beginning. Um, and then we also have uh, presented to you a three-year implementation plan. Uh, we are in year two of that right now. Um, most importantly to note um, that we were able to bring in on a an additional instructional specialist coach um, being Miss, jo Miss Latia Johnson this year. Um, and that role has been instrumental, having the two of them, and they'll speak to it, and as I know, they that D will as well, how important that role has been um, in really the success of the program. Um, we also shared with you uh, a couple years ago that we were doing uh, a seven building approach each year. Um, and the reason for that was one for uh, fiscally, and most importantly, well, fiscally obviously most importantly, but secondly, from a human resources standpoint. We really knew that what we were putting in front of teachers, um, we needed to support them. Um, and that meant giving them coaches in order to do so. Um, and then this is the, the visual that I really did want to point out that really encapsulates the work that you're going to see um, in action tonight. So as a district, we um, put together this culturally responsive instructional um, visual, and it was a collective group of principals, teacher leaders, district leaders, um, teacher leaders, and this really um, summarizes for you beautifully what you will see in SAM Labs. SAM Labs brings real life, real learning to life. Um, you will see problem-based learning alive with SAM Labs. You will hear from these guys how empowering we are finding this program to be for all of our students, which is exciting. Um, that's not often that a teacher can really say how wow, every single child in my classroom is excited, and we truly are finding that. Uh, another thing that we have seen is the inclusivity with SAM Labs. We are seeing students that are sometimes the quiet ones come just alive in the classroom. We see students that before would not speak up, that are loving working in a group, that are just have that engineer mind, um, that don't always get to be that shining star. So that is another thing that hopefully you're going to see um, highlighted tonight as well. And with that, I'm gonna stop talking and Graham is gonna take over. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to my, I have the great honor of introducing you to Graham. Graham was my student last year. Um, he won the National Design Award in May, which was huge. And Miss Jane, I know you were in our classroom when we were kind of putting it all together. Um, so she came in to kind of witness it live in the classroom. And we had half of the class that was going through beginner lessons. And then we had an extension group that was submitting projects to this competition. And we ended up winning. We found out like the last day of school, which was very exciting. So you are speaking and listening to an expert. <laughs> <laughs> so um, go ahead and go forward. Okay, sorry. Um, actually, go back. Okay. I'm not usually talking in front of adults, so we can kind of <laughs> skip around back and forth. Um, so Graham's going to walk you through a project that we go through, uh, that we went through last year together in third grade. Go for it. Do you mind to borrow one minute mm -hmm. so I get? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you don't have microphones either. <laughs> so why don't you talk about what your project goal was that we're going to show them tonight? The project goal was to make a working automated 
stoplight system and a car that moves on the green light. Awesome. So when you guys take a look at, um, I don't know if you can see it behind you, um, the programming up there, why don't you talk about the two um, pieces of SAM Labs? There are two big pieces of SAM Labs. The software, which is in SAM Studio, and the hardware blocks, which is used to create things off the computer. Awesome. <laughs> you did a good job. Um, so again, um, when you take a look here, the coding on the top, can you talk about the blocks that you used beginning and end, not the middle? Um, the first block we used was an out, was an input that starts the system when you press the space key. And the last block, an RGB LED light, um, will turn on when you press the input. Awesome. So our input is pushing the button and our output is a light turns on. Okay. Um, and so what we were looking at, we started with just getting the light to light up. So go ahead and hold up your stoplight so they can kind of check it out. So we have light, which is great, but stoplights in the real world are not like that. They're automated. So we talked about creating a smart system and how to do that is by using different buttons that are available in the software. And what are those called? Those are called in the middle. behaviors that tell the system like what to do so the light will circle through green yellow and red awesome so the coding that you're seeing on the top is just for the light if that makes sense so now if you as adults i know some of you are programmers and that probably is like basic language for you um, as a teacher at primary this was a foreign language for me as well and so we'll talk about support in a little bit but for graham you're doing an excellent job explaining this they're impressed you see them nodding when they're nodding they, they got you um, so when you take a look at this system the light on the top is the program there and then we see those two blocks on the bottom what are those the two blocks on the bottom are dc motors that move the car okay so go ahead and hold up your car yeah show and tell so we have the two dc motors here uh, so tell them what's wrong with the program up there the car will not move right now because the dc motors are not connected to anything you have to connect them to the three like right before the green so that it will move when the interval turns to three and the light is green the car will move Dang, that is perfection Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so again, um, like the extension that we're looking at is first, can we get a light to light up? Yes. Okay. Now extend it. Can you make it an automated system? Yes. And I love that you know someone had said smart system. I don't know if it was you or me. Um, but then we talked about sometimes like the lines there are very clean. When students are programming, they are not clean lines. It's you know there's lines all over. And so we talk about efficient systems. Like how can you create a more efficient system that is simpler? Um, and so what Graham has done, if you turn your Chromebook around for them to see, um, Graham has connected his DC motors to that light where he, we know, we're hoping it works for you, um, that the DC motors will run when the light turns green. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do a demo for you if that's okay. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed. So why don't you, oh, I'll take this digital light. students like most exciting lessons they love this this is one of our starter lessons the starter lesson three and they absolutely love this lesson i think this lesson could really be in a classroom and when the students were able to get the lights to change colors like they get so excited the joy is amazing and one student in particular was just like it works <laughs> and he was just so excited about that um so i just wanted to give you that little tidbit while they Graham, why don't you tell them about the stoplight holder? The stoplight holder was like 3D printed. Uh, Where? Where? Uh, in Miss Batchelder's class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you'll notice right now it is red. Um, the color selection he's able to do online in the settings. Um, so that is set up, and then he has his car here, and so now he's going to hit the button. And talk through it. I'll hold this for you. And when the light turns green, it will move, and then stop, and then move again. 
does stop on yellow and so in the classroom having conversations about the fact that sometimes the students raise their hand my dad floors it through yellow <laughs> <laughs> and we have a conversation about the safety and how it does make those um, one last thing that we wanted to share with you is his perspective on how sam labs has helped him as a learner so in the classroom how did it change the dynamic for you as a learner i like this talking I liked Sam Labs because I got to choose what to do for the system and how to make it better, more efficient, and faster. And I like working with partners and helping other people to make theirs better. Yeah. And the competition is there too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's like that group got their car up and going and they're, you know, trying to peek and see and get design tips. And I think that um, it's just authentic. Um, Graham, you did a fantastic yeah. job there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so now going to my um, perspective, um, this can change a classroom. And Miss Jane, I love that you um, had come into my classroom and kind of seen the chaos. I know I was so sweaty the day you came because, it, you know, it's a work in progress, right? You can't control. <laughs> it is, um, but we hold so much power in our hands. And when we are making decisions based on what's best for students, um, this experience has given him not just the communication with his peers, um, but handling the disappointment and mixed joy of others, right? Like, I'm happy for you, but I'm not for me. Um, and it's real world experience, which I think is so very powerful. Um, it also connects um, with computational thinking. When you look at that in the programming, I remember when we sat down for a training, um, you know, you're trying to wrap your head around it as an adult. But for an eight-year-old to be able to explain that, it takes high-level thinking. And I want you to really soak in. Um, so the first bullet point was curricular connections. Um, the easiest way to integrate this is with science. Um, so some examples that we did in the classroom, we were studying, I'm terrible with mics, I'm so sorry. Um, we did magnetic forces. So we studied magnetic forces, the different pushes and pulls, and we're like, okay, design a car and make an experiment that shows the reaction between the poles. And it was amazing, the students, um, what they came up with. The group in the middle, um, you know, had put their magnet in the front end of their car and they were driving it, um, you know, and they were trying to measure the distance that it would pull. Um, that's not something that I told them to do. It's what they came up with. And that creativity piece is a huge lens um, that this Sam Labs gives. Um, an extension to that was that instead of just pushing the button for it to go, we added a slider for power. So how fast is the motor going? So again, when we're talking about meeting the needs of all students, for some students, it's just turning on the button and it works. For others, you know, you can really deep dive um, with it as well. Um, we also did a weather experiment. So we studied seasons and climate change. This one was a hard one, right? The weather board. Um, and we had talked about using intervals to select a color to represent the seasons. Um, you know, and that, again, basic level, that's what we're looking for. Um, and then friends like this were able to take it to a whole nother level with the DC motor and creating a windmill. And the windmill speed matched the color that was then on their board. And again, like what deep learning are my students doing? Um, it's just the hands-on, the critical thinking, and they remember it. They remember it. Um, you know, they, were t they are just so excited when they come back. I have a little pack that comes back every morning that talks about it. Um, so anyways, curricular connections that way. Math and social-emotional learning is another place that this can be integrated. Um, so some projects we did this year, we did, um, what was it? Oh, fall lantern. So the kids collected leaves after the seasonal change weather unit. Um, we pressed them, they made lanterns, and then our goal for this year's group, because his group had graduated and gone to fourth grade, was just getting the light to turn on. Um, and so we have pictures of all their lanterns lined up with all the different leaf designs that they had created, and the lights were up. And they're like, well, what if we make them 
cycle through different colors. You know, okay. Um, so again, extensions that way. Um, around holiday time, we did a gingerbread house. Um, in third grade, we always build actual gingerbread houses, but to make a digital one, they colored them in, hole punched, put the lights through, synced six lights, and made an automated light show. And then they're like, well, what if we sync it to music? And then again, here they have their slider. Well, can we use the slider? Can we use the slider to make the lights dim and go, you know, like the Larson light show that's famous around the area here? I was like, let's do it, let's do it. Um, but the creativity piece, again, they're engaged. They are deeply engaged, and it is so fun to participate in that way. Um, and then obviously the designs uh, for the national competitions is something that's an opportunity as well. Um, it's hands-on, critical thinking, deep understanding of the content. It's not just north and south. You know, it's not just opposites attract. It's so much deeper than that, and there's value, I believe. Um, as far as instructional practices, it's active learning. There's so much differentiation. Um, and so many different ways um, that you can do within the classroom and you can meet the needs of all the learners. I have 28 in my classroom this year and it's hard to differentiate and meet the needs of everyone and this gives me a different opportunity to engage um, in that level. Um, and it's also more personalized, like Graham had said, like I had the idea to make the car like this, the cars don't always look like this, um, which again I think lends itself to here's your kit, what are you going to do with it? It's open-ended. Um, and the last one that we always hit hard is the peopling skills, <laughs> we call them. Um, you know, can you work with other people? Um, when I am your partner and we don't agree, how do we navigate through that? Um, and such a an, such an unique opportunity to do that with the SAM Lab things. Um, communication, being assertive with what you need and what you want, tying in with our SEL goals. Um, the emotional management I had mentioned earlier, but. Um, managing the joy for others, like you can have joy for someone else and still feel disappointed on the inside. And that's a really hard thing for little kids to understand. Um, you know, and there are tears sometimes, but those again are natural things and coping skills that we can work in place um, to go forward. And then the two things I always say is we're looking for perseverance, right? We want you to try your best and never give up. So even if you are excelling and my car is not moving, I'm going to keep trying at it, which I think is fabulous. Um, support. This one I get a little emotional about. Um, I could not have done this without Liz's support, okay? Um, the experience from watching her come in and do it and letting me see it in action. I had the student lens and I got to sit and just kind of see and perceive and take it in. There is value in observing other people. There is value in it. Um, and I'm an, an early adopter, so it's like, oh, we're doing it, sign me up, I'm in, I'm going to do it no matter what. Um, but for other people in my building, to have the opportunity to sit back and take it in and see how it should look and how the conversations happen and what the kids are saying side by side while she's teaching, that's powerful. And that makes me a better teacher. Um, developing excitement through understanding. I cannot tell you the joy I felt personally when I understood what was going on in that <laughs> screen. <laughs> um, when you look at, yeah, yeah, when you look at it at first, and I know they were like, oh, the, you know, they're kind of worried about, you know, are you going to be able to explain it? And I, that's the joy in it. It doesn't make sense. It's a foreign language, but um, we had a kindergarten class that was working on a gingerbread story, and they were just trying to light up one light, mm -hmm. and they were able to do it in connecting with literature. It's just, it has, it has so many possibilities um, that it could go through. Um, I just think being able to watch someone else do it, it's just, when you can watch someone else in their craft, it's eye-opening into their soul, um, and that gave me a connection to her that when I had questions or I wanted to try something new or something wasn't working, I had that confidence to reach out. Um, and that is something, you know, that we don't always have is that support system. Um, and it, I really enjoyed that <laughs> for questioning, for brainstorming, and also for pushing my own limits. Um, we almost didn't submit any projects to this end of the thing, and I'm so glad we did. Uh, yeah, um, so taking risks myself um, is something that observing someone else gave me the power and entitlement to do that as well. Um, as far as professional development and growth, ongoing conversations have been helpful. It wasn't just she came in and she was gone. Um, you know, I could email her or she pops in the building, she has office hours, and then I'm able to collaborate with other people in my building. So, you know, my fourth grade team had just picked it up this past semester and they are raving about it. So now we're fighting over kits. We all need more kits. <laughs> you know, there's never enough. Um, and what, you know, like how amazing is that, that everyone is wanting to integrate it and provide these purple you know, purposeful opportunities for our students and the feedback from parents has been amazing. Um, the big thing is I just want to continue that 
with that support to have refinement in my own practice. You know, how can I grow individually um, and then expand it to include other areas besides just math and science. So um, that's my part. It's spreading like wildfire. We are so excited and I take so much pride in having students that place nationally. Um, and so just thank you for the opportunities you guys have given me as well. Thank you. Um, and as the director, this, this is what brings me joy, to see that excitement and that empowerment and that thanks to the team here. So, thank you. So that brings us to how we went about doing that. So really looking at um, innovation from the perspective of what are we gonna do to help build teacher and student capacity. So as we, oops, sorry, thank you. Um, as we were considering building that um, capacity within our teachers and students, um, we really kept in mind three main areas or focus goals. First being community, next communication, as well as collaboration. And with communication, or excuse me, with community, um, Dee really spoke to it best when she talked about fostering those strong connections together. We really found the importance of that, um, building those teacher leaders and, and just watching them thrive, and also prioritizing SEL integration, not only within the classroom, but honestly within staff as well. And, and that's how we also meet um, our priority for our strategic plan as well, fostering that staff growth and collaboration and um, support of one another. So that brings us to communication. And we do a great job of communicating. Sometimes I think we over communicate because we're everywhere, like literally everywhere. Um, we have our SAM Labs website that is just for our 204 teachers and it makes everything easily accessible um, to our teachers. So we literally have our schedule where they can book myself or Liz to come into their classroom, whether it's for planning so that they can prepare for a lesson or have us co-teach a lesson with them or model it. Um, we also have our newsletters um, connected to our website. We have, oh my gosh, teacher resources, administration resources. Um, we have our curriculum alignment on there. Like our website is a one-stop shop. It's literally the best thing ever. You guys should check it out. Um, and also to add along with that is we developed a car ride with the Sam Sisters, which is our podcast. So we started a podcast together to start by talking of, I mean, because time is of the essence, yes. right? And we were having like the best conversations in the car, like on our way to <laughs> lessons at the beginning of the year together. And I was like, we should record this. Like we come up with some really great like things in the car. And hence we came up with our podcast and it's literally a car ride with the Sam sisters. We recommend that people listen to it on their way home or on the way to school <laughs> and take a car ride with us. Um, and we go through some of our starter lessons in our most recent episode, we invited a teacher um, onto the podcast and she talked about the SEL integration um, and how we can work on that in the classroom with SAM Labs. Um, and that leads us to collaboration also because, um, number one, I just love this team and I <laughs> love being in this role because it provides me the opportunity to collaborate with other teachers on a larger scale. When I took this role, um, my principal, my previous principal downstairs, um, Sally Osborne, um, I was like, I don't know, like, I'm just trying something new. I know I just, um, I taught second grade for two years and now I'm trying something new, but now I'm gonna try something else new. And I was like, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I just like to collaborate a lot. And she was like, it's that one. You just like to collaborate a lot. And I was like, thank you, yes, I do. So this position like really gives us the opportunity to collaborate with other teachers, um, which on the next slide you'll see that there's a quote that shows that the most valuable resource for all teachers is to have each other. And I truly believe in that. Um, as you can see, there are lots of happy teachers there <laughs> collaborating with one another and having the best of times. Um, and like just having that opportunity to be in the role of student, not just like teaching all the time, but having that opportunity to talk to your colleagues about like, what do you think about this? Or um, just explaining lessons and this didn't work in my classroom. How can we make it better? Um, just gives us the 
like the best resource in the world. Um, I recently had the opportunity to collaborate with um, one of our PA teachers, um, Wendy Weagle, and she is amazing. And we both taught the same lesson. We came together, we discussed it, like, and how it went in both of our in both of our different with a checklist for students so that they could become more independent rather than relying on us as much um, because it is a first grade classroom that we did this with. Um, and then we also decided that the language and the exit ticket or the assessment was just too wordy for kids, so we made it better. And then we tried it again. And we could see like our progress and then also we saw like the, the difference that it made for the students. So having that opportunity to collaborate um, is amazing. And now I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> um, along those lines of collaboration, I really wanna recognize Laura. She has done a phenomenal job at aiding our um, burning desire to collaborate as well as um, just having the fact that like we sit down and we revisit things and we're able to come back to it and then you know as Lakia just gave the example go ahead and change it up um, along the lines of collaboration though we really strive to have personalized professional development and this is the part that I really wanted to um, highlight is Laura always comes to us and says we need to meet them where they're at and that's really our goal like we want to meet teachers we want to meet students exactly where they're at and our line um, that we love to say is how can we help you know we're, we're there to support you to be alongside you um, what is it that we could do to help you with this so um, thank you so much for listening tonight we know that that was a lot um, I'm not sure if there's well, more um, for the slides but um, back to you <laughs> Can you tell we're excited? <laughs> um, so I would, now I'm going to round this out with not quite as exciting, but um, the nitty gritty stuff. So kind of to get you to um, understand how we got to where we are now, um, our team really, really tried to take a look at how we're going to do SAM Labs from an innovation standpoint. And we looked at something called diffusion of innovative innovation. Um, it's a theory out there in the world. Many of you have probably heard of it. Um, and really what it says is in order for this to be sustainable, we don't have to, us being our team, make sure that we get into every single classroom. We would love to, um, but it, the real reality of that in a district as large as this is just not feasible, right? Especially with only two of them. So what we really try to do is look at right where that tipping point is. Where is it once we get enough people that, it, like Dee mentioned, and it'll take off on its own. So usually um, they say it's like 13 to 18 percent. I decided to be a little competitive and say 20 percent. So um, as a team, we're always regrouping and looking at are we going to keep on hitting those markers of 20 percent. So when we are done in three years, will we have hit 20 percent of our staff? If we can say that, we will have those early adopters, the innovators, the ones that have taken it on right away would have done it anyway, and we would have, will be able to keep sustaining it and be able to bring up those last few people that really needed to see it. Um, a lot of times when I was in the classroom teaching fourth and fifth grade, um, for th an innovation to truly come alive and be sparked and to continue on, a lot of teachers are not like Dee and these two. They have to see it, and you have to honor that and respect that in their craft as well. Um, and we want to do that, which is to the point of meeting people where they're at. You're not going to have all the Ds out there ready to go right away. But in three years, after you've got the Ds of the world out there pushing forward, we will. Um, so just um, a really quick graph just to show you. So if we were to look at like our target, that 20%, that's that dark line, um, we are on trajectory to, to we have that and we'll continue to sustain that. Um, and by the end of year three, I have a feeling we're, we're projecting that, but I'm gonna guess we're gonna be past 86%. Um, we are really focused on building teacher leaders and empowering teachers. Um, so these, I don't have to say anymore because they already said it all. Um, so lastly, just some next steps. I think we've already mentioned the science curriculum. We've already done a deep dive into our science curriculum, connecting SAM Labs to that. We did that work last summer. Um, as the new ELA curriculum um, is getting going, we are very excited. These guys 
no surprise, have already <laughs> dug into the ELA curriculum and have found amazing connections. So SAM Labs will be a beautiful complement to the ELA curriculum as well. Uh, we're also looking at um, building out some STEM experiences systemically down to the early childhood. Um, so stay tuned for more on that. Um, and lastly, we're going to start some partnerships with um, special education. So um, there's a lot of that already happening, but doing some of that from a strategic level up here um, are our next steps. I get the boring stuff, but anyway, <laughs> that, is, uh, that is it. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, it was wonderful to share our excitement, and Graham, you did an awesome job. Very, very proud of you. Thank you for sitting through all this. Absolutely. <laughs> um, questions? Okay. Miss Jane, I'll let you start oh, since yeah. you had. <laughs> you experienced it firsthand. I did, and I feel so lucky to have gotten to do that. Thank you to all of you and to Miss Batchelder for letting me come to your room. Uh, everything you described, it was like reliving the experience of entering her classroom and seeing all the students on the floor. Um, every Every part of the floor was occupied with, <laughs> with a student. You had to walk very carefully so you wouldn't um, step on a student or their project, right? And uh, what was so interesting was to see how everyone was engaged. And that is, that is not often you get to see that. Um, the other part that I found so interesting was to see the different levels of trial and error and how the students were reacting to that. And then to see almost their wheels turning on, okay, it didn't work this time, what do I need to do next? And I think I had entered the classroom at a point where Ms. Batchelder had already instructed them to problem solve on their own before asking for help. And so that was also wonderful to see them take ownership of that and feel empowered to ask a classmate or to try it differently. Um, it is a wonderful experience for our students. Um, it's an experiential learning and uh, I, I was thrilled to, to see it and I, I recommend my, my colleagues, my board members, if you get a chance to walk, on, uh, to, to observe it for themselves because I think that was just such a spectacular experience. Um, my question for you is beyond, once your students have had this experience, do you see that curiosity, that authenticity for learning permeate beyond the Sam's lab lesson? Like, do you see um, a spark go off in a student that was quiet, and now do you see that student now participating in ELA in a different way? or? in a, a traditional math class, like how has that impacted the classroom dynamic beyond SAM Lab? Yeah, for sure, definitely collaboration, right? The way that they speak to each other, I think is just compounded, and you see it, that permeates very clearly um, across the curriculum. Um, the other part is debugging. Um, so something that comes up a lot in the lessons are, okay, like, it's not working, can you debug it? Or here, look at this, like why does this code not work? And so we practice this phrase debugging and they'll say it in math like, well, can you debug your mistake there? You know, like, and so it's kind of silliness that way um, and how they word it, but how they're doing it is meaningful that way. Um, but the biggest pieces I've seen, and again, I only started last February, um, would be how they speak to each other and the tolerance they have when it doesn't work the first time. Because that, when we came back from, <coughs> online learning, there was a clear hard stop when things got hard. Mm -hmm. And so to see them persevere through it and have the skills to know that they can ask someone else and you're not just on that little mute screen, I feel like that has been the most powerful for me to see. Yeah, and, and that was extraordinary to watch firsthand. I, um, I just wanted to comment on the importance of the human resource support. I, as an educator myself, I can imagine trying to problem solve 28 students. And, and so this is a totally different skill set in terms of facilitating a classroom. And so I can understand the hesitation for, for teachers who would wanna jump into it and want to watch and see how it plays out. But I so appreciate the way you structured the human resource aspect of it. And we're so thoughtful with that because it's not just about introducing a program, it's about growing a program. It's about sustaining a program. 
And so um, I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you. I have nothing else to say. Thank you, Graham. No, I have one thing to say. Thank you, Graham. You did a great job. The stumming. Well, I'm going to start with Graham because I couldn't stop smiling as you were speaking. Um, fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing what you've experienced because seeing your demonstration really helps. Um, I'm one of those visual learners I like to see. So you helped clarify it for me. So I appreciate that. Uh, I love how slide 12, um, you brought in the different sciences aspect. So I think that relates so well to some of the other um, curriculum areas. And you began to talk about ELA and um, obviously math, but the experiential learning, the, the, the thought process that they have to use, and the working together, those are all, we, we hear so much, um, I, I'm certain, You've heard it even um, though you guys are at the elementary level. So many times you hear businesses say that students are coming out of college and they don't have some of those um, the soft skills that are needed in order to really ensure that they can thrive in the business arena. And whether it's business, whether it's higher education, where, where a few of us are, um, it's just so important to have the thought process and understand how to work together um, so well. And so just listening and, and hearing the description of, okay, this didn't work, let me rethink it a little bit and see if I can't try it another way. And, and as um, Ms. Jane already mentioned, but I really like seeing how this helps applicability even in some of their other coursework. And, um, my, my background originally was a marketeer, so slide 13 speaks to me extremely well. Some of the, this is, this is true marketing, uh, different marketing phases, so uh, critical. I think it's nice that you're showing this so teachers who may not be an early adopter understand and can see, you know what, there's, there's, there's a place for me, and it's okay that it's gonna that I may come in at a little different level. I can still be really effective, and I can still be really strong, and this can still be a wonderful opportunity for my students. So, I didn't have so many questions. I just had a few comments that I wanted to share. Ah, I cannot wait to view this podcast. Oh, it's um, amazing, <laughs> man! I I can I can uh, see you guys uh, on one of the morning shows or something uh, with your with your podcast so I can't wait to <laughs> take a look I <laughs> can't wait to take a look at it thank you for the innovation the creativity wonderful job all of you Ms. Gunt I would like to start as well by saying you did an amazing job Graham I think you've been one of my favorite presenters actually ever <laughs> no offense to everyone else in this room <laughs> <laughs> and yes, like Ms. Deming, your demonstration helped a lot, the visual learning. And it's always great when a, a fourth grader is talking and I'm thinking, I know, I understand about 50% of what he's saying. <laughs> but when <laughs> you showed it, it was amazing. And I, I think already my you know, colleagues here have touched on the fact that I just love how SEL is integrated into it. And just seeing firsthand how excited you know the kids are getting and the collaboration level I just think it's amazing that we're going to have a chance for all of the kids to do it um, and I did now how are there other classes that have been using Sam's lab as well uh, any of the like younger younger kindergarten could I just, just yeah, yeah. out of curiosity what does that look like because that is probably more my level that I could do <laughs> So it, um, SAM Labs itself differentiates the resources. Mm -hmm. So with the starter lessons, there's four starter lessons that teaches the students how to utilize the software as well as the hardware. So from the age of kindergarten, they're learning using Bluetooth to pair their little hardware device to the software in their computer. Okay. So they have um, K-1 starter lessons and then two through five starter lessons. Okay. So the nice thing systemically is down the road, we won't need the fourth graders, fifth graders to go through those starter lessons because the students will be familiar with the platform 
and they'll be able to really just jump in to the content level that they're learning at their grade level. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's absolutely amazing and I look forward to kind of seeing how it it plays out over the next couple of years and just one last question did you guys plan on matching so perfect no, no. okay they really did it because that was the first thing I noticed I'm like okay they collaborate wonderfully <laughs> and we wrote together in the car yes <laughs> You are. No, it's perfect. I look forward to listening to your podcast as well, guys. So thank you all, honestly, for all the work you've been doing. One more thing I want to say um, to your question is that the lessons are age appropriate also. So those kindergarten lessons are very simple. Um, and they're not nearly as long as our two to three five lessons that we have. Um, so I was in a kindergarten grade just this past Friday. And the, the lessons are very quick to maintain a student attention. It's about like 15 and 20 minutes, whereas like the second grade lessons, we sometimes, or second through fifth grade lessons, sometimes we could be broken up into 45 minute segments. So those kindergarten lessons are much, much simpler for her. Mr. Krubus. Can you put up slide eight, please? Thank you, Graham. It's very important to hear the student's voice. Um, and you did a great job with it. The board members are provided with the packet in advance, and we got that. <laughs> and that, that means very minimal to me <laughs> until you taught me what that means. So thank you. Um, we work on board policy. We work on strategic plan just like you started with, and that was slide one. But it's so important for us to hear that voice so that we can then incorporate it into our board policy and strategic plan. Um, and we don't all get to the classroom. And so some of that needs to happen here. Um, and so we talk about like the second order impacts of what's going on here. And we use vernacular like ELA curriculum. But I'm a simple man. And I break it down to you having the confidence to come to a meeting like this and speak in public. Um, so you signed up for a STEM lab, and now you're giving a public presentation. <laughs> um, so that takes it out of the education vernacular and just I see the immediate impact, the second order impact of these programs. So that's fabulous. Um, one of the concerns I have with anything like this is the fidelity of the implementation of it across the district. But after having heard the presentation, I, that isn't a concern. You guys hit it right on the head um, with the development, with the support, with the podcasts. I mean, that's, um, that's huge because we are a large school district, many schools you know, limited resources, how do we reach out to all the classes, how do we make sure that it's happening in all the classrooms so that there's equal opportunity across the district. So I was, I was hearing exactly what I wanted to, so thank you for that. Um, although it's a little extemporaneous, I would like an offer, offer an opportunity to hear from Graham's parents, yeah, if you wish. <laughs> I've been spending the, this whole meeting kind of staring at Aww. you because we're looking at each other. On, we heard Robert. from the student's perspective. We heard from the teacher's perspective. But, um, you know, he's, he's bringing this home, and, he's, and, he, and you see the excitement, and you see the learning opportunity. So if you wish, please step up to the podium and offer some opinions. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Savannah Smith. I'm a teacher at Wabonzi, oh, so that. I'm very much proud of Graham, uh, as you can imagine. But yeah, this program has been so wonderful for him. He's been thrilled. He comes home, he tells us all about it. When we go for open house, we get to take a look at his windmill and all the things that he's done. So, so proud. Um, he participated in a STEM camp over the summer, too, and continued. You know, that's something that we hadn't had interest in. Uh, prior to this, so um, great program. We're very proud. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing further. Okay. 
Mr. Rising. Yeah, my two comments are very similar to Mr. Karubis is if you could just go to slide four really quick. Um, you know, we talk about on the right there, the uh, portrait of a graduate and it's like, I think I heard every single one of those things when you guys were just describing um, the SAM labs and um, Mr. Karubis and I were on board back in, ironically, February of 2014 when we approved the STEM school um, and now to see Liz, the work that you're doing, what we initially imagined with the STEM school and now it's coming to fruition, you know, with, with both yourself and, and Latia, um, with now bringing that back down to the classroom and to the different schools and, and so on and so forth. So that initial, initial vision that we had of the STEM school, now we're doing it in house and it's so wonderful to see that we're doing that throughout the district. Um, you know, and, and I mean, so much, Graham, by the way, you did awesome, man. Um, and congratulations on your recognition for that national competition. That's pretty cool. Um, and I think I agree. It might be one of my favorite presentations in my 12 years on school board. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I look forward, I guess, to seeing, um, I, I appreciate kind of you giving a, initial overview of how you see this going from school to school you know I, I guess I'll be interested in that in the future of you know how we can uh, assess and identify all the Mrs. Uh, Batch elders at every school and then they kind of maybe take ownership of it or we find those teachers that can they're collaborating with their other teachers within the building right so and then how that fidelity as Mr. Karubas mentioned goes from school to school and across the district because I want to want to make sure that we're also learning from each other from school to school as well. So, um, you know, I, I look forward to that down in the future, but this was great and thank you so much. Yeah, I think part of that is principals and being part of principal conversations. Um, and to what you were just saying, I also wanted to point out uh, Nancy Fister. Mm -hmm. um, that, this is a perfect example of another teacher. She's here for D. Um, and she has worked with these guys, and she's just a teacher at SEC, and she has been on the SAM Labs train as well, um, and has been a great advocate. So thank you for thank being you. here, too. Yeah. I'm learning it all from Dee. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Fosdick. Okay, I have to start by saying, Graham, I've been on the school board for a couple of years, and I still get nervous speaking at meetings. <laughs> so I'm pretty impressed that you're willing to come speak to a whole room of grown-ups that you don't know um, about what you learned and I think that's really cool so thank you for coming um, something I really love seeing across the board here is the excitement and fun that's happening both with teachers and with students um, because I think when our teachers are even more excited about learning than they already are it spills over into their kids even more um, and it's just really exciting to have another opportunity for that to happen um, and for the teachers to also become learners again and spill that forward. Um, the other thing I think was really important is when you were talking about the students learning how to work with each other and say, well, I wanna do it this way, I wanna do it this way. That's a lot easier to do when you're deciding what sentence you wanna write down on from a book. It's a lot harder to do when you really care. And if you really care about the project and you're excited and you're having fun, it takes even more control <laughs> It's hard for grown-ups to do. Um, so for kids learning that, it's such an important skill in everything <laughs> going forward. So being able to practice that um, in a safe and fun environment is, is really crucial. Um, my only real question is, um, I know Ms. Ms. Johnson mentioned an exit survey and making it less wordy for the kids. Do they, as an English teacher, <laughs> I'm curious, <laughs> do they do any um, like writing reflection about it? where they like generate their own reflection on that? Um, so, um, Sam Labs actually provides a lot of that for the teachers mm -hmm. um, as a resource. So they can, they're like ready to become bilingual. And Sam Labs even provides like a little graph for students at the bottom with transition words that they can use okay. um, to help with their writing and things like that. So it really is like, I, I love Sam Labs
That's great. I'm happy, happy to hear it. Thank you so much. So like everyone said, Graham, a great job. It really is brave of you to come here, and I'm so um, happy for your accomplishment. Um, I am a computer engineer, so I love anything STEM. I love when you talk about how you integrated in, in the English program and the math program and the science program. It's like it just I just eat that up because I didn't get to do that when I was a kid. Um, so I, I also, like Miss Jane, did go visit at Brookdale, and I was trying to remember if it was either kindergarten or first grade that I was in, and the teacher told me she was an early adopter of the SAM thing, so they were, when I walked in, they were um, talking about pairing their devices, inputs and outputs, <laughs> creating a circuit with a light, and then they evolved, and they had, all of them had partners, so I sat down with two kids that were partnered. And they, um, at first, were told to build a circuit and have this light turn on and off, right? And then um, it, it was going to introduce different colors so they could have different colors. And I honestly, I, I called him after because I couldn't believe it. Um, they were having this debate, the two little kids, very nicely about what colors they were going to use. And the one kid says to the other one, indigo. I'm like, indigo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, and I kind of quizzed him. I'm like, uh, how would you describe indigo? And he perfectly did. And I thought, I was eating dirt at this age. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was incredible. And the excitement, working with a partner. And then after we had that, they um, brought me into the LMC. And they had, um, I think it was a fourth grade class that was being introduced to Sam Lab. So they were giving them some instructions. And then they had like, all these different things they could put together and build. And they told them, like, next week we're going to put wheels on things. And so I was in a little group with all of those kids, and the excitement was overwhelming. And the thing that I really, it's the perseverance, too. Like, they would get stuck, and then they would be like, okay, i got to figure out how to change this. But then they were helping the group next to them. Like, I got that one to work here. Let me look at yours. So it was very constructive in many, many different ways, and I just ate it up. I mean, I li literally did call him after because I just couldn't believe that indigo co comment <laughs> and what I was hearing these little kids talking about. So um, keep doing what you're doing. Um, one, my one question is um, the classes that um, want to do SAM labs right now, do we have enough that every teacher can get uh, the equipment or? There we go. Perseverance. Um, yes. So we originally, um, last year, thought that we would, originally when Doug and I talked through this, we were uh -huh. thinking three kits per building. Um, the bad news is that's not nearly enough. The good news is that that's exciting and people are clamoring for it. So the goal right now is one per grade level with understanding that some of the buildings are bigger, so they're going to need some more. Um, but yes, we have plans for that. Okay. Yeah, no, great work and very exciting. And I witnessed it, and the, the staff also were very excited about it, and uh, just everyone was very engaged. So I, thank you, and keep, keep spreading the word and spreading this out. So thank you so much. So thanks. I just want to say one thing. Um, Due to the great work that everyone at the table has done, um, Sam Labs loves our district. <laughs> they love what we have been able to produce, the energy, the excitement, and so um, more to come with regard to what, 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 may, what may happen. But re really, it's a great partnership. Uh, I'm so happy that... Um, they see the, the, the great work that's happening here in Indian Prairie from the students uh, all the way to the adults. And so uh, it's, a, it's a great collaboration and a great partnership. Well, thank you so much for tonight's presentation. All right, our last item is any legislative advocacy or a Board of Education updates. Does anyone have any? Do you want to talk about um, IASB presentation? Yeah, uh, presentation ideas for the next Triple I conference next November are due um, at the end of the first week of March. So if we have any ideas, um, 
to present for a proposal, um, collecting those ideas now, and we can discuss ideas on the table at the next meeting um, once we collect those. But just like um, Ms. Jane and Dr. Talley were able to present last year for the mental health things, we've had a presentation almost, almost each year that I've yeah. been on the board at least, um, and whether it's come from administration or the board or collaboration of the two. Um, so if, if we have ideas, we can discuss those at the next meeting. So uh, I know at the triple I, last I conference, I talked to a couple of you individually, and we were thinking, uh, you know, and I, I'll email you this, but because you and Supna were on board at the time, or Katie, we, a few years ago, I think maybe four or five years ago, we did a presentation. Um, it was something to the effect of, dysfunctional board tried governance and and we talked about how our board works together some of the stuff we've put into policy and, and I think with what you're seeing with a lot of dysfunctional boards maybe it's time to bring that one back um, we wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel necessarily but just update it and it'd be relatively simple so I'll dig up the information I can on that okay yeah that can definitely be one of the Considerations I think there's for a proposal. couple ideas floating yeah. around, so I think yeah, let's have a good discussion on it. And, yeah. Sounds good. Maybe we invite Graham for. I know we <laughs> can take <laughs> time with us. Roadshow. Uh, any other uh, comments or uh, Susan, you were. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share that um, we had the Lind meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, and there are a number of things that um, they are going to. Uh, be discussing with the state legislature um, over the next uh, over the next uh, session and um, dual credit um, AP uh, a number of different things were are on their agenda and I will just share that uh, our superintendent uh, tally is extremely well respected uh, at the Lind uh, organization oh. and uh, was turned to and had 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 uh, shared some important things around um, e-learning and um, some considerations that a number of people had some input on and, and just some things that we've experienced this year with some of our uh, closed dates but um, stay tuned a number of things that they're going to be bringing before um, the state so that's it. I do have something um, so I, I owe you guys still the minutes from the meeting from that group that I'm on for IESB that meets with the state superintendent and his cabinet. I owe you that. I will get you that this week, I promise. I owe you a second thing, because somehow I got put on a committee for IASB with their government team on um, school board advocacy. Um, and I attended the first meeting on Friday it was more of an informational meeting and what their thought process is of the direction that they want to go. I think just judging by some of the districts that were there, I think our district is very far advanced as far as the advocacy we already do um, locally with our state representatives and that type of thing. But, um, you know, I think there'll be some good conversations that come out of that. It was, like I said, it was only the first meeting, but I'll, I'll get you guys the minutes on that too, so. Any other items? All right, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any yes. opposed? Okay, we are adjourned.